Double, 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 double P podcast. Double P. What I like to call. Double, 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 double P. What I like to call. Double, 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 double P podcast. Welcome to Ice Cold. A podcast about the terror infamy. Season two of the terror on AMC. Today we're going to be breaking down my sweet boy. It's episode eight of season two in which... Chester and Luz have reached a turning point in their relationship, one that causes an evil force to catch up to them. Very slowly. Amy must take matters into her own hands as she's tormented by a powerful nemesis. Plus, Chester meets a boy who gives him answers. Oh. Catfish, we're going to be breaking down my sweet boy. It's just you and I. We don't have Mork on today's show. We miss him. He'll be back next week. So sad, unless he disappeared into the sand. So let's hear it. What is your ranking for episode eight of season two, The Terror Infamy, my sweet boy? Well, I couldn't decide. At first, I was going to give a double A's. Double A? Yeah. Oh, Amy! <laughs> but then I decided to give it, in honor of someone who's dearly departed, double, I give it six double B's. Double B's? Yeah. Abandoned Bart's. <laughs> And Bart, as we all know, is Luz's father, who's quickly brought in this episode and then quickly forgotten since everything in this world revolves around Chester. Chester's like, I don't get rat's ass about finding information about your father, but you maybe mean? you can help me. Listen, Luz, it's me, Chester. I, when I go into this Corandero, don't worry, I'll think about your dad <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. She'll never I- know. I will say the truly scariest things about tonight's episode was all the scenes with C. Thomas Howell and Amy before it finally happened. There was so much menace in those scenes. I was on pins and needles during every scene until they finally released it. That was the best part. Those were the best part of the episodes to me. I'm confused <laughs> by that. At one point, Chester's father says, well, we've been here three years. And then... When Luz rightfully says to Chester, hey, how come you didn't tell me about this woman? He says, well, we killed her two years ago. So that means there's been a two-year jump in the last episode. And then if that's the case, then why is Chester hanging out and, like, the scene that happens with Chester and Luz at the top doesn't seems like it really only happened a couple weeks after they just got there. It doesn't seem like that was a scene that would happen two years later or a year and nine months later. I'm just confused by a lot in this episode. Well, that is a sign of a quality show. It is. All right, let's, let me get to my ranking, Catfish. Cause you do it. Let's hear it. I want to hear it. Because I want to get to it right at the top. You mentioned something that I've been talking about for a while. Bowen of season two is no hickey of season one. Until tonight, they created menace. With this character, yes, he's still kind of a one-note villain, but the fact that there was menace throughout this episode, it raises this episode's rankings to me up to eight, what I like to call triple S's out of ten. Oh, yeah, triple... Wait, 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 triple S's? Well, if you hang out in New Mexico like I do, you know that a triple S is a sepia sandcastle suck hole. And so if you're in the sandbox with a suck hole in sepia tone, you're screwed. And... R.I.P. Possibly Jiro. We hardly knew ye. Jiro I, dreams of not sushi but sand. <laughs> He's like my buddy Anakin, who's always talking about sand, how it's annoying and it gets everywhere. I thought this episode was good. I think some fundamental flaws that can't knock this show to the highs of the first season. But I think there are good things, and I'm so glad you mentioned that Amy and Bowen. Mork last week talked about, well, why am I seeing Bowen versus Ken? I want to see Bowen versus Amy. That's what we got this week. They oh, built yeah. to it very slowly. I mean, this is episode eight, but they got to it. It was great. I think they could have milked this for several episodes if they had wanted to. Sadly, we get it all in one. R.I.P. Major, not R.I.P. R.I.P. meaning rest in puddle, Major Bowen. Really, really good stuff. Catfish, before we get into breaking down this episode beat by beat, do you want to go over some of the great feedback we got this week? All right, let's do it. Well, from YouTube, John McDonough says, thanks for the intriguing discussion. So I don't know, he must have been listening to some other discussion that was actually informative and interesting about this show. But I'm glad that he somehow left a comment for us 
about that. Right. He was thinking to himself, thanks for an intriguing discussion. I didn't think three people could have the wrong ideas about the terror infamy. <laughs> How intriguing. Actually, thank you, John, so much for those kind words. Now, this next note we got from YouTube Catfish, we might have to break it down for a bit. I love that we got it. But do you want to read this next bit of feedback we got on YouTube? Uh, I do. Do you want to stop me during certain parts of it? Or yeah, I'm gonna, I'll just good. point – I'll pause you during certain times when I think okay. we need to talk about it. Okay. He says, I could barely finish this episode because of all the suspension of disbelief this show was making me do. He somehow swam with cuffed hands, then got rid of them, got to San Francisco, got his car from the professor, drove it to his girlfriend, took her with him, and went all the way to New Mexico? Well, yeah, let's pause right now. Yeah, that all took one year. That's why when it's two <laughs> years later, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> okay, that would help me out. He says, all of this, however, he mm -hmm. makes a good point here. All right. All of this without raising any alarms or getting any attention from people around him in war times where all the Japanese people are hunted and should be and have been before this show reported to the police. Well, that is a really good point. That is admittedly talking about last week's episode seven. And you guys brought this up last week. They were kind of just jumping ahead past several important plot points so they could reunite Chester and lose. Yeah, but in a way that didn't seem, I mean, does wh wh where did they stop? Did she say he was her driver? What? No one, uh, did they <laughs> go on side roads? And it's, it all seems very strange. It seems unbelievable that he could make it to New Mexico. No problem. Then, Silver Nicker says, Then we learn that there's a twin that was never mentioned before, especially in the Yuko's flashback, unless I somehow missed the second baby. You did it. There was a, That was a surprise to everybody. Yet Yuko only cares about Chester for whatever reason. Well, she now, couldn't, she couldn't find there. Jiro. Yeah, apparently right. in this right. episode, when she finally sees Jiro, when she takes over Chester in the sepia tone flashback to the playground, she's like, Jiro, you've been hiding from me all this time. Hmm. We'll have to discuss that, how she found Jiro and I guess just took his spirit because it's just a, it's a past spirit. We'll, 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 let's, we'll get into that later because that allows for a lot more suspension or disbelief when you really break it down. Mm -hmm. And then Silver Nicker goes on to say, on top of that, we see that the twin brother was in the same camp the entire time as indicated by Chester's parents in the infirmary. So for whatever reason, after you know Chester learns about his true parents, his adoptive ones still keep the secret about his goddamn twin. Now, Bubba, you're going to have to help me out here. Did I miss something last week? No, this is a great question. I wonder if I'm missing something. So is it possible that we missed a hint that Tashiro, which is Furuya's son, and, of course, the woman who died to start the series, he was always presented as their son. Was there a scene last week that implied Toshiro was actually the other baby? Was Jiro? If there was, I have to I be honest, I completely out, missed it, it. It also seems like later on that she can't get, the only way she can get to Jiro is through Chester's sepia dreams. So I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm just saying if that happened, I missed it. I did, too. I did, too. These are right. great comments on YouTube from Silver N-I-K-R. Love it. Silver Nicker. And the last thing Silver Nicker says is, all of this is a bit too much for me personally, even without the last point. I agree with him. Oh, I almost forgot. Apparently, Chester got zero injuries from that car crash, even though it looked as if he broke something because he couldn't move when Yuko was getting all up in his business. Now, for that one, I'm just going to say there was a period of time that we missed. I believe he got sent home because of those injuries. So and he maybe, rehabbed perfectly. <laughs> yeah, he just healed up on the way home. I mean, it's some. I, I listen. I'm not going to say that that was perfect. That Silver Nicker is wrong about this. I'm just saying, in the list of my concerns about things about this show, that is uh, low on my list of things that are bothering me. I completely agree. Let me say we got feedback this week on YouTube. Last week we got feedback on Instagram. Listeners, I love it. We want you to join in on all our social media platforms. We are, of course, the Double P Podcast, part of the Double P Media family. And even though we're Double P Podcast and Double P Media and the hashtag Ice Cold Podcast about the terror, it's all under the umbrella of our social media handles, which are at Double P H Q on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double P H Q. YouTube, 
Well, you just got to search Double P Podcast. Search the Ice Cold Podcast about the terror. However you find us, we love it. Am I right that our good friend, Peter Conley, who writes us, somehow is able to see these episodes before we do, and he actually, we actually get comments on the episode that we are talking about tonight? Yes, this is, Peter is a true great person that we like to call a double L. Double L? A loyal listener. He's in Australia. They're always ahead of us on the day. You know, by the time we record, it's tomorrow, for, or it's yesterday for Peter. So I think Peter is getting to see this early. I love it. And what did he say this week, Catfish? He said, hey, guys, I have a question. If Yuko takes a baby back to her place, won't the baby forever be a baby? Yeah. Surely I... people don't age there, so the baby will never grow up. Surely the fun of having a baby will decrease with the constant changing <laughs> of nappies forever. True. Now, Jiro was of age where you think he could use the restroom on his own. But, yeah, if she tries to steal the most latest version of I mean, Chester and lose his baby. Ooh. It's clear that he doesn't have the coordination to throw a baseball, so maybe he oh. can't. Maybe he, he's not good. You are one of those mean bullies who were picking on Jiro in the orphanage. You go ain't going to take that well, buddy. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just have to suffer. Maybe she's in a car and it'll take her two years to get to me. I got two years apiece. Let's get busy, Luz. Bow. Yeah, right, Bow. right, right. Bow. 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 I'll leave any time now. Luz is like, you've been saying that for two years now. <laughs> Catfish, there are two big storylines in this episode. Uh-huh. And which do you want to tackle first? Amy sure. and Major Bowen's final showdown? Or Chester, Luz, and their inability to escape Chester's mom? <laughs> Let's uh well let's go with let's go with Luz and Chester first. They start off the episode. Well, we call this podcast in case anybody's joining us halfway through here our coverage of season two. We call this podcast the hashtag Ice Cold Podcast because in season one of the Terror they were trapped in the Arctic and it was always cold. And yet the characters had a lot of problems between themselves, so they were always throwing out ice cold disses at each other, and we just loved mm-hmm. it. We decided just because we love Disses so much to keep the ice cold name. And this is what I like to call a subtle ice cold catfish. Uh, tell me. The episode opens with Chester asking Luz, do you want me to leave? Luz, no. <laughs> ice, subtle ice cold. You know what, though? He's kind of a baby. He says, again, uh, whenever I do Chester... Maybe I exaggerate a little bit, but he's like this. Yeah, a couple of days, I'll be out of your hair. Yeah, he's Why he, is he being in such a little bitch. She's asked him to stay before. Now, granted, at this point, we don't realize they've been there for a year and a half, <laughs> so we think she just asked him. But regardless, he's been hanging around forever. This whole timeline doesn't work for me one way or the other. So I kind of, uh, I kind of love it. Think if it's been two years. <laughs> right. That this aunt of Lou's keeps kind of stringing him along. Hey, what about this? <laughs> hey, fix this. She is getting a lot of stuff done around the farm. I love it. Yeah. Good. Good for her. I hope that's Donna, Donna Maria who gets what she needs done before she gets got. <laughs> now, another one. It, it is an ice cold, but Chester, you know, he's talking to Lou's right before mm-hmm. they reunite up in his bedroom. Mm. And Chester's like, you must have thought I was crazy. Lose once again, I don't I don't want to uh, comment that this is the actress's acting, but she's like, no, I never did. <laughs> Not believable, lose ice cold. But this passionate romance, it's tough to see the passion. Now, admittedly, it would be if they had gone through all this together, if she had lost children. You know, I, I can't imagine how emotionally devastating this would be. But I have to be honest, seeing them get together didn't bring a warmth to my heart. How did you feel, Catfish, about seeing this star-crossed couple, Chester and Luz, finally reunite and get married? I mean, you know, far be it for me to complain about the lack of development of relationships, because I'm here for two things. One is for scary moments, and and two is for ice-cold disses. But... This couple hasn't spent enough time together or processed things together enough for me to give a rat's ass about them. I mean, first of all, with my feelings for Chester, I just I want to tell I want to tell Luz to run away at every moment. I'm like, <laughs> you're better than him. What is it about this guy? 
Catfish, you are bringing up a great point. That I think we just have to talk about the structure of season two. We met Chester and Luz after they had already fallen in love. And they were kind of in a bad... And out, sort of. Yeah, they, they were in a bad broken. spot. So we yeah. didn't see the romance develop. So as an audience, we couldn't enjoy the development of it, the creation of it. So we, we meet them in a bad space. And then they do kind of romantic and nice things to stay together. Luz really sacrifices a lot when she agrees to go to the camp with Chester. But you're right, then Chester immediately goes away to war. So we haven't seen them together too much. And so I like both actors. I'm not as tough on Chester as you are. But this Jerk. this romance, maybe it's been my own seeping in, my own fear. But I've felt this romance has been doomed for a long time. And so seeing them get back together, anti the knot, to me it just signaled more trouble. And it just doesn't, I'm just, I just, yeah, we just haven't seen enough of them together in a situation where you would think that, this is a couple that should stay together or okay. is good together or actually cares about each other. I mean, we know that's true about Chester because Chester cares about one thing. He's, he's a damn broken record about finding out about his mom and his parents and being salty at anybody who didn't tell him right away. And, so, and he didn't tell Luz right away either, did he? Oh, no. Yeah. He never tells Louis, oh, well, you know, two years ago, we thought we killed it again. <laughs> two, two years, years ago, we found this kidding. creature that was my mother and we set it on fire. Love yeah. you. Yeah. Here's something important maybe you might want to know. So, yeah, it's just, you know, maybe for me it's not working because I find Chester such a dick. But they could have used his relationship with Louis to soften him. Yeah. And to make him a much more likable character. And they decided, nah, <laughs> let's not. Well, Chester makes a big mistake that I'm very lucky I didn't do at my ceremony. Hopefully you didn't do a yours, Catfish. Chester didn't invite his mom, Yuko, to the wedding. And she is pissed. No, come on. He invited her. It's just they couldn't wait two years for her to show up. She's <laughs> at, at one point, we do see her. I don't know if she's riding in the back of a trunk or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, okay, she's on her way. I mean, why did it take her two years to get there? I mean, it feels like she could take over people, and let's just say she took over people and made them drive, and she just kept crashing cars. Eventually, she'd learn <laughs> how to drive, nah. and she could get there. The timeline doesn't work out here at all in a way that's really frustrating. Now, well, granted, did hold on? Did I she get? Did she get to Guadalcanal faster than she got to New Mexico? Yes, yeah, she did. Well, hold on. She's been burned a lot, or burned dead. She was dead, and she got burned again. And so, you know, this is tough for her. Maybe I'm we're not even going to respond to the, to the, <laughs> the shenanigans. <laughs> now, hold on. You don't want to tip your cap to Yuko, a dead spirit which got roasted alive barely escaped had to stitch together herself from parts somehow made it from la to new mexico in only two years impressive well i mean you know i guess it runs in the family because it took two years for chester to stop doing chores and finally admit he wanted to stay for lose man i need chester's skills because lose is beautiful and, I'm uh, telling you, they, they 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 made a mistake with me. They needed to leave just one line out. I thought she was dead two years ago. They needed to leave that out. That I mean, they put it in for a reason. They wanted us to know what time had passed, but then the rest of it makes no sense whatsoever with that timeline. Okay, a tense moment, which ties into some of the tenseness we're going to get between Amy and Major Bowen. The sheriff comes to the house, and you suddenly think, okay, this fugitive Chester, and let's be honest, that's exactly what he is. He is a fugitive right. from the law, has to go hide, and that's tense. And you're like, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I have to admit, even though the two years doesn't really make it work, the twist of, oh, no, it's the sheriff coming to tell Luz that her father has been missing. I love that as a like a way to right. twist now, listen, expectations. Maybe you could have sold me that it was only a few weeks later when Chester mm -hmm. and Louis got together. Right. But but then you're telling me by the time they were married, by the time the cops showed up. So now you're telling me that it took two years for the cops to find after her father disappeared. So either way, like, you're not helping me with the timeline. No, I, I'm not. Now, Louis, 
Just as Chester's had a lot of tragedy, Luz has had a lot of tragedy as well. She lost her mom. Now she's lost her father. She lost her brother in the war. This is, And she obviously lost two kids. This is really taking a toll on her when she finds out that her dad got you code. That is like a gut punch. Yeah, it is a gut punch, and I think grounds for divorce. <laughs> Your Honor, my client's father got you code. Full custody for Luz. I was earlier in the episode mocking how Chester said, do you want me to leave? And Luz was like, no. Well, <laughs> later on, Luz is like, my father is still alive. You believe it, don't you, Chester? I hope he's still alive. <laughs> I, what a reassuring husband you have, Luz. I mean, Chester's real response is, uh, wait, hold on. You can find out uh, people are, are dead or, or still alive. Okay, um, let's table uh, your father's situation hey. until much later. <laughs> let's, I mean, real a dick move. If he had shown up at the sand lot, that would have been great. Oh, my God. He's just such a dick. All right, so we do this ritual, and just as a, let me apologize to all listeners who thought this podcast would really you know, present you with interesting facts about Japanese folklore and Japanese spiritual beliefs and that kind of thing. I am similarly have no knowledge of this curandero, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. Curandero, right? Curandero, okay. This, this Spanish ritual where you're able to talk to spirits, but you got to be careful because you don't want to bring them back, apparently, if they want to stay, that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, you knew once Chester got involved, everything was going to work out perfect. Oh, no, poor Chester's luck. He goes through with it. Chester's there in the circle of candles. It's very beautiful. And there were little flashes where it was Chester, like in sepia tone, and then the empty swing. Little flashes, and I was suddenly wondering... Is Chester Jiro? You know, there was there was a moment there when I was really intrigued. But then it turns out, oh yeah, it's, it's much simpler than that. Chester has found his way to the place where this photo was taken. And Chester has connected with his lost brother, Jiro. And they have a moment. Chester seems to be able to connect with people mainly over baseball. We saw him connect with that prisoner of war in Guadalcanal. And here he is, he's connecting with Jiro. How did you feel about those scenes? Did you like that Chester tried to cheer up his brother? Those are probably an objectively good scene. I I, I was still hung up on how <laughs> Chester makes everything about him. Not even a moment for poor Luz's dad. Just all about him. Yeah, he totally forgot Luz's dad. He did not try one bit to find out what happened to him. But then, once again, I gave this episode 8 out of 10 for moments. And for, we'll talk about Amy and Major Bowen in a bit, but for moments. The moment that I really liked in this dream sequence, I want to call it, even though I know it's not a dream, is when Yuko takes over Chester. That's a, oh, snap, I love it, love it, love it. It is weird that you have a bit of sympathy for this monster of Yuko, but I just loved it so much. And when she was going after Jiro, and they were moving towards that sandbox. Oh, oh boy. You knew what was going to happen. You knew what was going to happen. Just like in the limbo world we've talked about, the sand right. can suck you in. I he, mean, but this Jiro's is, but, doomed. But we're, oh, I'm sorry. Doomed? Did you say doomed? What do you think is oh. going to happen to Jiro? Well, I mean, I thought, I thought it was good in so far as right now he doesn't have to deal with Chester anymore. <laughs> Catfish, you are terrible. How could you say that? If I had to choose between Yuko and Chester, it's Yuko every time. Why? Yuko cares about me. She's gonna... Chester only cares about himself. Now, she wants to grab Chester, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping for Jiro's sake that Chester slips out of her grasp and Jiro never has to interact with Chester again. How could you say that? Now, if Yuko could take over Chester, this should be a very easy capture, don't you think? Let's just grab it. He's right there. I'll take control of him and bring him to some sand. Also, this is the part that I alluded to earlier. It's very strange. So we're not really dealing with real Jiro. We're dealing with, like, past Jiro. So did, they, did he go to the past and grab him? Is this just spirit Jiro? What happened to the real Jiro? We don't know. 
Well, maybe this is kind of the point of what is going to slash has happened to Chester. Remember, throughout this series, people have talked about Chester being kind of like dead already. And Chester missing a soul or something. Maybe this is going to happen to Chester in a way where his younger soul will get sucked in. And that's why he's always been incomplete. Mm, wow. Well, I mean, he, everybody has everybody has a justification for their horrible actions. When Chester comes out of this horrific vision quest that he's been on. He's got one thing on his mind. He does. You know what? Now it's time to look at the wedding photos. <laughs> you know what, ladies? We look at them before. Right. But let's look at them now. Ladies, sometimes you can't get the man back interested in the wedding photos unless there's a bakimono, unless there's a yuri in there. And then they'll take the time to show them and, and relive the magic of that special day. This is, this, is, this is bad news for Donna Maria. You know, let's cross ourselves for a wonderful religious Donna Maria because that's a bad way to go. You go to Chester's wedding and then after the reception, you have a wake. I mean, ooh. Tough luck for R.I.P. Donna Maria. Yeah, she's uh, she's one of the lucky ones, and one of the unlucky ones is Luz. She's pregnant again, right? Right. And you she, go and is Donna on the warpath. Donna Maria path. is lucky, and Luz is unlucky because Donna Maria Donna Maria has escaped the grasp of Chester. <laughs> I'm so terrible. No, they're both unlucky. Everybody's unlucky on this show. This but is mostly lose. Mostly lose. She has had it ridiculously she made a lot of bad rough choices in her life. Well, really, just one. So that's it for this week. Chester goes running out. He's screaming. He's trying to, you know, he's screaming at the wind. Catfish, where can this go? I've thought for a long time that this relationship between Chester and Luz is doomed. I've felt for a long time like Chester is doomed. I. Do not, once again, I apologize as a podcast host, I probably should know a bit more about the subject matter, but I don't know anything about Japanese spirits and how you could possibly ward them off. Chester's in trouble. He really needs his adopted family. He needs his he needs his mom and dad, let's be honest. What he has done by turning them away is really cost him a lot. His mom is great about warding off evil spirits, and his dad is now as bitter as Chester is. It seems unlikely, since I keep saying everything's doomed. But what Chester really needs is to reconnect with his side of the family. And Luz even mentions that. You know, I wish it had been a better wedding with members from both sides of the family. Yeah, well, you know, that's just to be careful what you wish, because Chester's mom showed up late and caused trouble. (laughs) Man, oh man, oh man. Now, Catfish, did your mom come to the wedding? (laughs) She came on time. Yeah, see, way to go, Yuko. So that's it. That's where we're going. Sorry, I I guess I was trying to ask you a question. Do you see any way out of this for Chester? How can they defeat Yuko, the forlorn monster of this show? Right. Well, they got problems, right? Because what she wants is, and this is kind of what they figure out at the end, that she's back for uh loses baby so that is uh that's bad news all around and so let's say to the parents out there when the grandparents want to come in and take your infants don't let them Mm, good point good point so that's it for this week catfish let's get up to the camp which might be possibly our beginning to say goodbye to the camp we have jumped ahead two years and let's just talk about that for a minute. Yeah, well, we saw possibly they, they, we camp, saw one they year. Said it had been three. three yeah, years. they had been in the they camp, been in the camp three, three years, years yeah. but they were, had been in a camp a year when they burned when they tried to kill Yuko through burning her. So, either way, how do you feel about that? That it seems like we're already with two episodes to go, going to say goodbye to the camps up in Oregon. It's weird. It's it's also weird that I really feel like. Gosh, you know, and we talked about this before in that this season really hasn't made a lot of use of the camp. In other words, this story could have been told without the camp, whereas last year's story, the environment was integral to the story. And and I really feel like that was a missed opportunity here. And in, in a way, I mean, last year was so brilliant. I mean, Most of what was happening was just the horror of their situation. And then 
the horror of the supernatural monster was sprinkled in and, and added to the woes. And in this one, I really felt like they, they didn't really do it. I mean, G- George Decay feels like he disappeared for the last three episodes. I mean, I know that he, you know, was the one who was like, you know, I don't know how to bind a spirit, but I'll give it a shot. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I just feel like we're... We we missed we we missed a lot of the of the life of the camp last year. I was starkly transported to what it must have been like to be stuck in the Arctic and the privations people went through. And I really felt like that did it. And 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 we didn't we didn't get that opportunity here. And and they, and they're already leaving. And so I. I feel sad about that. It's 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 a real missed opportunity to say something about what was happening back then, which is something that's happening now. It just re- really just just kind of missed. And, and and you know, part of it was taking Chester away to Guadalcanal for some reason, and and just. Well, I think Catfish. I just want to echo everything you're saying, and and maybe. I'll even put a bit of this on me about expectations. When I heard it was centered around these Japanese internment camps, that really did pique my interest. This was a bit of history that I knew a little bit something about, but I feel like everybody should know something about it. Like you mentioned, it certainly could comment very well and and ominously about where we are today as a nation. But because of that, maybe because I was looking so forward to it, we need, didn't feel as central to the story. This is really Chester's story. And so when Chester leaves to go to Guadalcanal or to now go to New Mexico, it feels like the camp has been put on the back burner. And for me, that's been tougher. And so I, I just want to echo your sentiments. And listeners, if you disagree, let me say, who cares what we say? This is one thing we always say here on the Ice Cold Podcast. If you disagree, if you feel like they've given us a good look into these camps and to the horrors that these real-life people went through, please, once again, write to us on our social media at DoublePHQ on Twitter and Instagram. Join us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash DoublePHQ. But having said that, the action centered in this episode, it very lightly deals with Chester's parents as they're getting reparations of $25 each and a ticket home for three right. years. That's terrible. Oh my God. But I will say this. It did have one of my favorite lines of the episode in it. Oh, let's hear it. When, uh, and, and, then, and then let me do the echo afterwards because I, because it's slightly different than usual. When Chester's mom says, well, why should we leave? Chester won't know where we are. And Chester's dad said, why should we wait for such an ungrateful son? Ooh, hashtag ice appropriate. <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, this is the ice appropriate podcast? Yes. <laughs> I don't have an ice cold this week, but that was the my favorite diss, and it was not an ice cold moment. It was an ice appropriate moment. No, man. How could you? But that's really How could Chester... Okay, listen, that's really kind of the only moment we really got with them. We saw that Henry yeah. is, to get this release, he almost has to take a somewhat demeaning job of being a gardener for these people. But it's good for them to see them getting out of the camp. What is creepy is Major Bowen being back. They set this up pretty well. Okay, Bowen's been called to Washington. They didn't have to tell us that Amy had sent the tapes there Listener, viewers can put two and two together, and they're like, oh, Another snap. confusion I had, though, if time is supposed to have lapsed, and we saw in the last episode, like, in some ways, it really feels like both stories are shortly after the last episode, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that in both stories, they indicate that a lot of time has passed since the last episode, which totally confuses me. It is confusing, but once again, Bowen leaving... With the threat of, oh my goodness, Amy's turned over the tapes where he admits he murdered somebody for just putting them down like a dog. You think, okay, this is going to be good. And then the fact is Boeing is coming back. He's acting normal. He's trying to give Amy things to drink. Oh, so good. I will say every scene they had, it was, I felt like it was the framing of the shots it was the way the scenes were shot. It was the way C. Thomas Howell was acting, the way Amy was acting. You could feel the danger and the the fear I had for them in all their scenes together. I was like, the shoe is going to drop at any 
minute. Everything seemed menacing. And the fact that they played with it for a while with a few different scenes, we thought, you know, he takes her out into oh, the middle man. of nowhere to oh, get man. some alcohol. That like, is all tense. these things happen. You're like, oh, my God, it's going to be horrible. And then maybe not. And then, boom, they give it to us at the end. That, I thought, was excellently done tonight. The performances were excellent. The the writing was great. The way it was shot that was that was great. That was great. Yeah, I want to. I'm, we're going to have to backtrack to some stuff in a bit, but okay. I want to go to my favorite shot in this, to where it has been so stressful. It has been so stressful. We're there at the welcome back party. It seems like we're okay. Amy is having this moment with her brother Walt, and you begin to think, okay, they've survived this much. But then when they go to dance and then the camera lingers on those two glasses, oh boy. it was so powerful. It was like, oh, no, great moment from the terror. Maybe I went a bit higher than I should have with an 8 out of 10. But and maybe I went too low because those scenes, and there was a few of them, were yeah, great. They, they were, were great. They were really, really good. Let me jump back, if it's okay, Catfish, to a, what I think is a small scene, but I believe it might play an important role in the end game even if it doesn't, had a really good ice cold. So we have Tashiro, who once again was Furuya's son, and he comes up to Walt, and Walt, you know, what's so funny, I, I want to say this, is it doesn't mean much, but, you know, Walt and Amy are very likable. You know, like, there are a lot of likable characters on this show. So Walt is there, he, he just comes across a very likable guy. Tashiro comes up, and Walt tries to be honest with him. He says, you know, if they don't want to send white soldiers to this dangerous place they send to us, man, this isn't for you. I really, really love that. But Tashiro's final response where he says, all I've seen is people die around me. My mom, my dad, my friends. I graduated from high school in a goddamn prison. So help me. All I want to do is kill them. Whew, ice cold. I loved that, that little awesome. moment. And so, okay. Let's get to it. Aim. So this is something yeah. that I don't know and that we should know, right? They're still recruiting people for the war effort, and yet they're preparing to let the internees out. And so I don't know how that lines up with reality. Like at what point they decided, okay, we feel we can trust these people. Or was it they did mention the Supreme Court ruling? Maybe finally the Supreme Court said, no, no, none of this. But again... To my shame, I don't know the answer, and also to the show's shame, it's not super clear. No, it isn't. That, once again, this is the stuff that interests me, and just those facts you talk about, Catfish. Yeah, I would have loved to have known this. I would have loved to have seen it. If you're going to leave the camp, and you know, you were talking about Season 1's location, one thing we haven't really talked about, Season 1 also had a, for most of its run, had a great feeling of claustrophobic. You know, They were trapped on these small, mm -hmm. confined spaces and couldn't escape. Season two could have had that, if, like a claustrophobic of tra trapped on the camp. But once again, they want to go to so many places. And so we didn't get to go to the Supreme Court and find out about this. Let's just get to the end of this. Amy, we focused on her cup. She has been drinking. And I just wrote in my notes, uh-oh, Bowen is back, baby. He's bad, baby. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell yes. Love it. <laughs> So good that scene, and I was I, it just a, some nice, nice catharsis there. I mean, if we're not going to have the the Aki Bono take care of it, let's have Amy take care of business. Oh hell yeah! I I did think it was a bit annoying that Bowen said, "Here, Amy, listen to this," and then he played a previously on the terror infamy. But, <laughs> but it's still good, and of course. This is what's so crazy. Sometimes in, in, in comedy, they talk about the truth in comedy. Well, here it's in drama. I do not necessarily know if this is true, but the fact that Amy could have turned those tapes over and that Bowen, you know, nobody said anything, it rings as that could have been true back then. And so I love that twist. I love, hey, yeah, you tried to get me? Nobody cared. I got buddies. Mm -hmm. They took care of it. They took my transcript and moved it to a top secret server. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, do ah. you, you, we have been teasing Soul Man, C. Thomas Howell, all season long. Do mm -hmm. you want to uh, say anything to him, Catfish? Anything nice? 
about his character. No, but I thought he did a. Uh, I did. He, I thought he did a, a, a great job. You know, uh, only slightly avuncular throughout the season. Um, you know, I felt like he could have maybe maybe they could have had him try to be a little bit more friendly, but maybe that would have been too realistic. But I I thought his performance was was awesome. Okay, I, I I asked you to say something nice about him. I gave you a chance. Go ahead and scream all you want. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, see Thomas Howe making amends for Soul Man. <laughs> and then Amy takes care of him with the classic double P. Double P. Puddle push. She yeah. pushes his face down in the puddle when she's like, well, I probably have really only knocked him out. And she's like, I've got to solve this problem. Ooh, snap, hell yeah. So now, so that's the, that's the real mystery since this storyline I care about more. What's going to happen here? How is she going to get away with with knocking, knocking it off Bowen? Yeah, I was thinking, well, how could, you know, okay, I've just killed Bowen and shoved his face in this puddle. How am I going to explain this? So, okay, let's set up the crime scene. I'm going to get some bottles of alcohol and just pour them down here in this thing. Then I'll tell somebody, hey, Bowen got drunk. He was sitting on this chair and he smashed it and he fell face first into this puddle and died. How do you know that? He left this suicide note. <laughs> Oh, well, so maybe she can re-edit the tape. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. That'd be great. Yeah, I kill <laughs> myself. <clears throat> I'm a dog that needs to be put down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is maybe unfair to say, but when you see the next on the terror, you wonder if... Amy to just walk away scot free. <laughs> there are two episodes left. Who knows? Listen, there is w- only one thing I care about. No okay. good. That is Amy being safe. All right. Well, she's and Chester's mom not having to deal with Chester no. anymore. <laughs> not I... his real mom. Although I... I'm sympathetic to her too. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was going to say I think there's a chance that one of those things may come true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it catfish we are 80 percent of the way through the terror infamy once Ooh. again good moments in this episode there's still little things holding it back but some of the strong stuff is so strong and we know we we are snarky p here but it's fun to celebrate the good stuff too absolutely like bowen getting it hard <laughs> Listeners, once again, we want to know what you think. We always read your feedback right at the top because this show is for you and you're a part of us. And leave us feedback at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Just just like Jiro, you're a part of us. (laughs) And just Just like like Jiro to Chester. Right, just like Jiro, you can't leave. (laughs) (laughs) Once this gets in your podcast feed, you can't escape. So... Bubba, next week, yeah. would you like to read the uh, – give us a little uh, teaser about what's coming down the pike next week? Well, I love the title of next week's episode. Season 2, Episode 9 is entitled, Come and Get Me. Ooh. The Terminal Islanders will return home to find that things have changed since they left. Oh, I bet. And the Nakayamas, still tense from the pain they've inflicted on one another – must come together to battle the spirit that threatens their future. Okay, quick question. Okay. Now I'm angry again. <laughs> oh, no, I knew this was coming. Okay, let's hear it. What? The only pain that's been inflicted has been inflicted by Chester. You don't think parents should be honest with their children? Their adoptive children? And, you know. I mean, yeah, I guess, but... <laughs> Team Chester, yay! Let's just be clear about this. He was a dick before he found oh, out. Oh, catfish, how could he just, well, After he found out, he used it as an excuse to be even more of a dick. You know, sometimes you need an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know what they say. Yeah. You, you, you can go, uh, the, the only thing that you can't go a day without, it's not food, it's not water. It's a ra- good rationalization about yourself. Well, yeah, Chester, get it, boy. Yeah, every day, Chester's rationalizing his behavior. Hashtag, name the kid Chester Jr. 
Ice appropriate. All right. So, Catfish, ooh, that's a good point. Do you want to name our hashtag ice cold or possibly hashtag ice appropriate slam of the week? I mean, I think it technically has to be an ice cold. I didn't think they were particularly good today. No, they were, they were tough. They were tough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I'll give it ice cold slash ice appropriate to Chester's father. Saying, we're not. Why should? What that punk doesn't care about us anyway? <laughs> I forgot what he said. <laughs> no, he said. He said. Uh, I got it. I got it. He says, "Why should we wait for such an ungrateful son?" <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Ice cold. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute, catfish. Ice appropriate. Wait a minute, catfish. I do have. Yeah. I do have uh, one thing for you. Who? Who? Yeah. Who? Who were the two people who were talking in that scene? It was uh, Chester's dad and mom. My parents are dead. Oh, my parents are dead. You know they showed that in the, in the preview mm-hmm. night, and I thought to myself, "Huh, he didn't sound quite as petulant as I remembered, nor as I portrayed him." But that's all right. You it's, know what? You can't slander Chester. It's always about context. <laughs> he's unslanderable. Oh. He's a He's a, he's an ice cold dick from way back. <laughs> so terrible, right? <laughs> you know what? For everybody here at the Double P Media Crew, my name's Bubba, and you can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F I T T E N T R I M at Fit and Trim on Twitter. Also, look at my hashtag Team Chester. <laughs> oh, and uh, I am Catfish. You can hit me up at. CJG Man sixty seven. Mm-hmm. Always, always use the hashtag. Chester deserves what he gets. <laughs> How terrible! Or just, just for short, Chester deserves it. Okay. So for everyone here at the podcast, will you'll hear us next time when you hear? You know, this doesn't make any sense. For everyone here, you're going to check us out next time. When we talk about the terror in all the ice, ice appropriate <laughs> moments. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Ice appropriate.